Hello and welcome back to another video for Final Fantasy XIV with me, Mioni. Today we're looking at another mount showcase, this time from the Final Fantasy XIV online store. As you can see on the store, it says new items available. This is of course referring to the Valentine's Day previous items from the previous year available. But additionally, we also have a listing today, as of the 3rd of March 2024, of a account-wide mount. This is the Crescent Moon mount, applied, like I say, to all characters created on your account, current and future. This mount is essentially a Laporit sat next to you on a large half moon uh, that floats around. It has this large veil in the background, and it will cost you £13.80 in the United Kingdom. In dollars, that's 24 US dollars. In euros, that is 16 euros 80. And of course, in Japan, if we were to compare it, that's 2,530 yen. This mount, like I say, is account bound. It is a single person mount. And of course, this will only unlock if you have your personal chocobo unlocked at level 15 and above. And of course, our posture might vary depending on our race. So we need to look at different races. So let's get into the game and look at this. So this is what it looks like in the game. As you can see, it is, of course, a Laporet Automaton on the side of a lovely moon with your character seated in a certain position. This seated position changes when you start moving forwards or moving around in general, and so does the Laporets. We'll get to that in a second. But your generic seated position does change depending on your race. We'll look at that again in just a second. I especially love the attention to detail on the motion of this, like the way that the fabric is swaying around and the stars are flapping back and forth. I love the particle effects there on the actual moon itself. And as we pan around here in G-Pose, you can see that uh, there's quite a lot of luminosity on this, even in the day. Although, to me, this looks a little bit more like a banana from a distance than a crescent moon. So I wonder how many other people also cannot unsee the fact that we're riding around on a massive piece of fruit. By night, we have, of course, that luminosity really brought to life. And you can still see all of those sparkles flashing around in the darkness with the swaying of the fabric and the stars. I think this is a really quite exceptional mount. I would have liked to have seen this as a reward in the game from something Laporit related. When they originally said there was going to be an allied tribal quest, I did expect originally that this might have come from that. Um, but uh, yeah, this is the sort of mount that I would have loved to have, have acquired in the game. It is, of course, on the store. The best thing about it is that it is account-wide. There has been quite a few mounts of late in the last couple of years that have not been account wide that in my opinion should have been but yeah this is really nice some daytime footage then because obviously just staring at it in the nighttime it's very nice very glowy and we've definitely showcased that but uh, you really can't see the majesty of this mount unless you've got some decent lighting conditions so here we are in g-pose i really like that fabric the way that it's animated Hopefully we get like cloaks and things in the game that have that similar animation. In my opinion, that would be a really, really cool addition, especially for like wedding veils, that kind of thing. But uh, who knows if we'll ever see that. The texture updates and things like that definitely allow for things to look good. But whether or not the animations would accompany that is another question entirely. A little Laporet Automaton then chilling out there on the edge of the moon looking quite content so this is obviously in a seated position uh once we take off this mount then looks pretty great when we take to the skies with a flap of that sort of sheet noise and then of course when we start to move around it's going to start jingling and if you stop it abruptly all of the sound disappears away from it. I would have liked to have had a fade down of that sound effect rather than it just disappear immediately, like just have a little bit of a fade on it. But yeah, in motion, of course, we're in that seated position. Your character slightly changes position and so does the Laporet, as you can see. So there's a nice animation and to give you a better shot of the Laporet and your own character as we're moving forward, we can use G-Pose's motion settings. So. As you can see, we've got a very different seated static animation and your character kind of leans forward. This again will change depending on your race, but most of all, it will remain the same. 
The Lopora itself, though, um, basically, instead of just sat there, it will do a lookout emote, which is pretty great. It's pretty great. I like that a lot. I think this is a really nice touch. And of course, how many other mounts do we have that have little sidekick Lopora on them? Not enough is the answer to that question. Another question to be asked is, what's the generic mount music like? Is it generic or is it something unique? Well, there you go. There's the answer to that. It kind of works, though, in my opinion, having the Palace of the Dead sort of background theme on this. It's a nice, gentle theme. It sort of works with it. But again, a lot of people will say, well, why didn't they use like the Laporet home theme and things like that? Yeah, especially... I would agree, considering how much you'd be paying for the mount. But uh, again, I think there was some restrictions on preventing them from putting in uh, music tracks to all mounts and making them all unique or something. I, I forget what the, the exact point was on that one. But yeah, there was something about that which I read somewhere. I think it was in one of the interviews. In terms of then, as we go into water and other areas, of course, we've seen a terrestrial form, we've seen flying... It's essentially the same animation. It's just going to fly through the water. There's no real difference. The one difference that I did notice is that the sheet, instead of uh, bellowing in the wind, obviously is looks like it's going through the water, which is a nice touch. And those stars on the bottom do seem to change depending on, uh, obviously, the well viscosity of what you're flying through. So water here is different. And also there is water effects coming off the top of the mount in the glide animation that's just stopped as there we go feel it off the top of the tip that sort of particle effect very nice very nice detail the mount tech says summon forth your crescent moon mount by all accounts more comfortable to perch upon than one shaped like a full moon yeah i'm not really sure how you would perch on a full moon probably like you do with any of the other mounts where you cling on for dear life. Designed in the likeness of a crescent moon, this magic gondola was being kept in storage in Charlian, where it was classified as a gift. While its origin is undisclosed, the automaton that accompanies the contraption offers a telling clue. Yeah. The hidden text then says, Gods, I can scarcely believe we went to the moon and back. A quote there of Thancred, and I guess minor spoilers there. But of course, this mount... I still think would have been best acquired in the game. The differences in size comparison then, the first thing to note is the mount does not scale with your race's size, so the mount will remain the same size regardless. However, the seated position of your character will be dependent on obviously your race and gender and will have slightly different variations of the same pose. So obviously we've got Mikote, males, uh, or our males, bun boy males, you know, that sort of thing. The thing that follows the same skeleton following all of the same model poses for males, and the same could be said for females. But of course, we have some slight variances the bigger the character gets. We start to see bigger differences when we come over to uh, obviously Rogadin and of course Rothgar. Uh, without still having access to female Rothgar in the game, I would likely imagine it to be very similar the way that female uh, Rogadins would sit on this, if I was to guess. Uh, the other big difference is obviously Lalafell. Lalafell females and Lalafell males having completely different uh, animation states in this seated position because they are a lot shorter and a lot smaller. In fact, they're almost the same size as the Laporet, which is actually quite cute. But yeah, in summary, my thoughts. I wish this was available in the actual game. Uh, related to probably the Laporets or the Tribal Quest Alliance Quest. I was kind of hoping that this would be the sort of reward we would get from that. Uh, but again, it's not too expensive in my opinion. And of course, you know, this is an optional extra. If you want to get this, this is definitely a, a cool mount to have. Um, but of course, it doesn't have more than one seat. It would have been nice to uh, to maybe replace the Laporet with maybe seat for another person to sit on there. A two-person uh, moon gondola would have gone down really well, I think, especially account bound. But yeah, thank you so much for watching. Let me know if you're going to pick this one up yet or if you uh, plan to ignore it. Um, and I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye. Um, but again, this does look like a big floating banana.
is undisclosed. The automaton that accompanies the construction.